All right, hey friends, Pastor Glenn Poplowski with Hey Pastor, Where's God? Back again, got a question for you. Why are you here? Why are you here on planet Earth? Have you ever, has anybody ever asked that? I know uh, the viewers overseas ask that question. Why are you here? Why are you up on planet Earth? Are you here just to take up space? I mean, if you want to be an astronaut, take up space. Or are you here to serve God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength? So when you get to heaven, you've got a, a course of history to bring with you. You've got a testimony. And people in our ministry make a statement all the time, this is a, a common thread, is that you can't have a test, a money, unless you have a test. So you can't have a testimony. You can have nothing to say about succeeding and having faith if you're not being tested. So right here upon terra firma, planet Earth, actually, which isn't so firma anymore, it's a... Uh, a lot of things that have been happening, a lot of uh, structural things, a lot of spiritual things that are taking place. We just had an election here in America uh, for our uh, uh, midterms. So the, the Senate is now red or conservative and also as a House of Representatives, is that everything has just changed. There's been a big change in tempo. And we've been noticing that in, a, in our country here, when someone wins or, or the extremists actually win, they get almost drunk with power. It becomes, it becomes hysteria. And just last night, on, uh, on November 4th, the election took place and the people voted that they want to get back to the point of actually fixing the system, fixing our, our system here in America. And this is what happens in the spirit, friends. When there's, a, when there's a change about to happen, you begin to watch what takes place with the governments. The government system that God has allowed to take place, God's word says that he will allow you to have leaders after your own heart. And if we have a leader that is leaning completely to one side and going in a direction that seems to be so far off course, then what we need to do is get on our knees and pray that God would give a correction. And this is a correction. These are things that happen all the time on planet earth. And actually, if it's happening on planet earth, up above us in the heavenlies, there are corrections that will take place also. And the only way we can correct things on planet Earth, truly correct them, is to correct them in the heavenlies, and that is by prayer. That's by giving the presence of God and telling us what we're actually here for. Telling people, telling them the truth of why we're here. Telling them why we actually live upon planet Earth and what this testimony or testing ground is for. I've said this many times, when you get to heaven, what are you going to talk about? I raised a family, I've had a, a, a great wife, and I had some, some kids, and they got into some trouble, and then they got out of trouble, and we sang some songs in church, it was awesome. Well, what about this? What about if we had what the Lord wants us to take with us? Have a testimony of this called the ministry of power. What if we had something that actually hits the mark and hits it hard? Like in a baseball game to where... You, you, you get a pitch that is thrown to you, and as you're standing there and you're waiting for that pitch, and as that ball comes, you pop that thing over the left field fence. How many people are on bases? Are you going for a grand slam? Are you going for just a base hit? Are you going just for a walk? Are you going for a home run? M most of us in Christianity today, that's all we want to do is walk. We're not interested in hitting the ball. We're not interested in swinging. All we want to do is stand at the plate and hope that pitcher will throw it outside or inside or even hit us with the ball so we can get on to first base because we don't want to play the game the way the game is supposed to be played. Now, that's not, that's not an unfair play if you get hit by a ball or if you have a walk, but do you want to be known for just being someone who doesn't compete? Do you want to be known as someone who doesn't want to play the game according to the rules? Because you could stand there... And uh, I, I guarantee you won't be traded the next year. You might, be, uh, you, might, you might be sitting on the bench if you allow all those balls to come in the strike zone and you're afraid to swing at them. Paul the Apostle is trying to tell the Corinthian church something. And this is what we're looking at in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, I wrote 1 Corinthians here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And Paul is trying to tell us something that is very important trying to pull us into a position where he's going to explain the ministry of power. He's going to explain to us what it is like to bring a ministry perspective of what has been lost here today and what has actually been needed 
to be corrected in the church of Corinth because Corinth was in a, it is in a bad shape. It's very similar to what we are right here today. So you can look at what's taken place where Paul is talking about to the Corinthian church, the letter that he had written to them. Just put the word America there. Put the word the American Christianity or the American church. I did a teaching, I know the audio was a little different. It, I, I did it last week called uh, Rick Warren and American Christianity. And what we've, what we've done is we've gotten so far into the entertainment of church, we don't want to hear truth anymore. We don't have a ministry of power because power comes with truth. If you want miracle signs and wonders to take place in your ministry, and we've actually, we've laughed that off as being something that went out with the apostles. But friends, we truly need a reset. We need not only a political reset to get us back on track. Now, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I've said this before. I'd fire them all and start all over again. And praise God, what's happening is there's a lot of new, fresh people coming in. And maybe they'll reset this system and actually abide by our Constitution the way our Constitution was des designed to actually be followed. So where we're at in life is that we have to play the game, we have to follow the rules and not try to figure every way that we possibly can to buck the system. And this is what we need to do with the Bible also. But we need to actually be preaching the Word of God with power. Now get the power out there, get the truth out there, and when you get the truth out there, you're going to get hit. There are things, you're not going to be the happiest camper in the world, and never, no one's going to around you is going to be happy because you're actually telling people to get right with God. Get their act cleaned up. Because when you leave this planet, friends, and you stand before God, are you going to be able to tell the Lord and stand before a holy God in the presence of His holy angels and all the other saints that are up there when you're judged and stand before the judgment seat of Christ? When you're there, are you going to blame your pastor? Are you going to blame everybody in your community because you've listened to a false gospel or you've listened to a deceitful gospel? Paul is pretty strong as he begins his, well, this is the middle of the letter actually, but when he's writing this letter to the Corinthian church, he's saying, listen, you've got to have correction. You can't be preaching false doctrine or deceitful or crafty doctrine. This is what we have today. Let's, let's listen. As Tony is going to read, we're going to try to see how far we can get through chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians. And I'm going to teach you something. We're going to lay a foundation for you today to actually bring a ministry of power into your life, friends, to where you're going to have truth come back into your life. You're going to have a reset. And as that reset, after you get the reset, then you can expect the power of God to come out of your hands when you lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover. The devil is afraid of a church that is operating in the fear of God. Not in the fear of people. And this is what we've changed it to. See, our political systems are designed to listen to the people. Let me say it again. Our politicians are hired to listen to the voice of the people. Preachers, pastors, evangelists are hired to listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of this blessed word right here. Not try to turn it around to where we have all kinds of different friends and we're the most popular person on the earth. See, because the church, what happens here, the church is what changes the spiritual system that is above us and actually gives us breakthrough for the politicians then to say, listen, I can't be pulling things over the, the, the eyes and the, the hearts of the people any longer. We are so used to deceit. We're so used to being lied to, we've actually taken it into our church and we like it. Just tell me what I want to hear, Pastor. President or Congressman or Senator, tell me what I want to hear. Don't tell me bad things. Just tell me good things. Tell me sweet things. And this is what we've done. We've gotten this Jesus, or God loves everybody, so we all get to go to heaven. This is the stuff that's starting to spill into the churches today. So God is so filled with love that he won't send anyone to hell. No one gets to go to hell. Even Hitler. You're going to be surprised because even Hitler is in, in, in heaven. Because God is so loving, he can't hate anyone. You see, this has been twisted. This gospel that we're, we're hearing from the stages today has been twisted to the point where it's not even gospel any longer. It's not even epistles any longer. It's not even truth. It's so far from truth because it's been mixed with a lie. And when you mix it with a lie, we have to see a correction come to bring it back to the fullness of truth again. And this is what we're here. We're starting a little series called the Ministry of Power. Tony, go. I'll start off with verse one, and I know we're going to jump. We're, we're going to stay here, 
but in the, the following weeks, we may be jumping a little bit and, and actually inserting some stuff. So we got some expository preaching here. We're going to open up the Word of God and let the Word of God speak for itself. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help out a little bit as uh, Tony reads. Go ahead, bud. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully. Oh, hold on a sec. Craftiness... Or, or lying, that's deceitful. Well, we're lying while we're preaching. We have to be truthful. We have to bring the truth back out again and let the truth be seen. So we have to, if it's deceit, that means that if deceit is mixed with truth, it's still going to lead you into deceit. It's still going to lead you into a false understanding of something. And we only have a short period of time to figure it out, friends. You could be led astray here. You could be, you can be listening to false teachers. You could be listening to people who are called by the apostles sheep. They, they think they're sheep. We think they're sheep because they're, they're saying that they're just like us. We're no different than you are. We got sin in our life. We got all these things going on. God understands. Don't worry about it. See, those are called wolves in sheep's clothing. Because they bring craftiness, they bring deceit with inside of our midst. And when we have deceit in front of us, we don't know what to believe. This is why we have to pick up the Bible and we have to learn what the Bible says. Old Testament, New Testament, all the way through. Read the words in red and pray for the power, pray for the glory of God to show up in your life. And what we've done is we've, we've pulled the different parts of the Bible apart. We've pulled the Old Testament out, we've pulled the New Testament out, we've said anything that Jesus said in today's world was only for the Old Testament. And then with the end of the epistles, we've gotten rid of those and we said that from the end of the epistles or the middle of the epistles all the way to the end of the Bible to the book of Revelation, that's only for the end times. So we've only taken about five to ten books of the Bible that we say are useful for us today. Well, this is one of those five to ten books of the Bible that these deceitful preachers are saying are useful for us today and that's all you need. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to get you with their own deceit. We're going, to, we're going to allow you, as a viewer, to listen to the words that Paul is teaching and saying that we need to get this out of our church. We need to clean our churches up. We need to clean our lives up. Because, yes, God is love. He does love everybody. But I'll tell you what, he loves the little rabbit in my backyard also. He loves everybody. He loves, all, he loves his creation. But I'll tell you what he loves more. He loves his word more. He loves creation in itself. So just because you're a human and you think you're made in God's image, you think you're going to go to heaven because you said a prayer, friends, you need to live for Jesus Christ. This is what Paul is, he's, he's strenuous. He's, he's, being, he's being pulled in, in, in all different directions to, to, to get the word of truth out. He knows he's got to get it out because he needs to set correction into the church of Corinth. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Again, verse 2, But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. If the gospel is veiled. So what's happening today, friends, is the same thing that was taking place with Paul recognized in the church of Corinth. The gospel was being veiled. It was being covered over. When you have a veil over something, that means that you can't see through it. If I have the, here's our statistics from our, uh, our channel that we have. So if this is in front of me, it's veiled. You can't see my face because I have this in front of me. So if I'm telling you something from this direction, you're not able to see my expression. You're not able to see if I'm telling the truth or if I'm not because the sense realm, all five senses need to be in operation to actually see the, the facial uh, transmission of the person that's trying to describe something. And I'll tell you what, when you read this, you can see, if you put yourself in Paul's position here and how he was laboring to get this out there, he's being very firm. And what we need again is that we need to be firm with power again. We need to take the Word of God and distribute it the way it needs to be taken. And when you do it, you do it in truth, you do it in love, the true love that God loves everybody. He loves you, so he wants to correct you. He loves you, so he wants to chastise you if you're wrong, if you're doing wrong. The problem that we have today is where we have so much sin coming into the church, 
we bringing everybody to Jesus instead of going out and taking Jesus to the world. Getting them saved, let them make the choices, and in the church is a holy sanctuary where the true Christians are there worshiping God. In today's world, what we've done is we've opened it up, and it's a sepulcher is really what it is. It's a, it's a, big, uh, it's a big graveyard, and you've got the walking dead within the churches. And the Spirit of the Lord has been grieved because we bring in all these secular songs, we bring in everything, we do whatever we want. We are offering the, an offering of Cain from Genesis chapter 3, 2 and 3. We see that it's, it's a position in time to where we need to reset again. And this is what we're praying for, is a ministry of power to fall upon your life, friends. So Paul is saying we need to reset, we need to have get the shame out, get the craftiness out, stop with the lying preaching and bring the truth back. And this will give you the understanding of what on earth you're here for. You're supposed to be here to make these decisions. You're supposed to be here to live for Christ and to recognize these motivational preachers or speakers. Motivational preachers, speakers, they, they sell a lot of books. The problem is, are they giving you the, the raw power, the raw word of God? Because when you preach like this, their signs and wonders are going to show up with you. When you're listening to this and you're beginning to hope again that the Word of God is true, you got to have hope before you have faith, and you got to have faith before God is going to show up in your life. That's the only way God moves. So you got to take the truth of God's Word and let it be the foundation that you build your house on, the foundation you build your life on, the foundation that is going to allow you to take your treasures unto heaven. We're here to build treasures, not here, but we're here to build our treasures in heaven before a holy and awesome God. And we can give a just account of what we've done here on earth. And we can say, Lord, I've done the best that I possibly can. And I didn't listen to the preachers that say, God just understands. We go, now shut those guys off. Turn your television off. And start all opening yourself up to people that are going to give you truth. Hey, go ahead, Tom. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Whoa, the God of this age. The God of the age that we have today. Our minds have been blinded because we're hearing only that God loves everybody and we're not hearing the truth about sin that's in your life. That's destroying your life. You wonder why the devil's in your homes, friends. We're allowing all this stuff to come. You know, the television's a wonderful thing. You know, these, these, the internet is a, is a wonderful thing. It's, a, it's technology. And there are people that take it to an extreme and say, oh, that's the devil's highway. That's the devil's, that's the devil's court. Yes, it is. But it also can be used to preach truth to bring truth to you. And what we've done is we've mixed the truth and we've allowed people to, under, to, to say to people and saying, you know, God just understands. If you're into pornography, that's why you got Jesus. Don't worry about it. Well, wait a minute. You need to get the sin out of your life. Get the shame to the surface. Get the craftiness out. Get the lying preaching out. Get the lying understanding out because that's how the enemy comes in. He comes in to deceive. And you'll begin to notice that your family will come back together again. And you begin to raise up your children the biblically, the way, it's, the way your children are supposed to be raised up, you'll begin to see life will be easier for you because you have a foundation of Christ to live on. And I can, I can just preach in this area, but we get, I'm going to keep going. Go ahead, Tom. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. Wow, check this out. Now go ahead and finish up verse 6. For it, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul is writing this. Now, he doesn't all of a sudden just kind of flip-flop by accident. He's doing this purposefully. He's saying that first it's about Christ Jesus. Now I've taught in some uh, the archives below me here. You can search this out and find out. I have a teaching about this. What does Christ Jesus mean and Jesus Christ? And I'll give you a briefing real quickly. Uh, what Paul is trying to say is there's a story from heaven and there's a foundation from heaven and a, um, a representation of what is expected of the Son of the living God and how the Son of the living God is to be followed and listened to and what is expected from a holy God standpoint of view. So a holy God, when he's speaking to the people and we're hearing the spirit of the living God speaking, representing his own son, it's Christ Jesus. When we're speaking one to another about 
the Messiah, we refer to him as Jesus Christ. So what Paul is doing is he's saying, first you need to understand God's perspective in the matter. He says, get rid of all the shame, get rid of all the craftiness and the lying preaching that's going on from the pulpits and in the homes. We've we got Bible studies going on and people, they, they just sit down and take a verse and they say, well, let's just figure out what this means. What do you think it means? What do you think it means? Well, I think it means this. Well, that's a good answer. Well, I think it means this. Friends, there's, we got to take the Word of God the way the Word of God is taught, the way the Word of God is represented truthfully from God's point of view. From the, 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 the Son of the living God that God the Father had sent down here to die for our sins. There is an expectation that God the Father has for Christians. And now we're not only to understand this, but we're to preach people, preach to people Jesus Christ. The love of God. God loves everybody. That's Jesus Christ. But when we look at the awesomeness and the presence of God when he's here to change us from that power, the power of God unto salvation, for the power of God to rest upon us, and when the power of God rests on us, things change. The enemy, the enemy begins to flee because we're, we're purposefully resisting him. We make it our point as Christians to resist an enemy who's so crafty, basically you can't see him. Craftiness, shame, deceit, lying, lying uh, 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 wonders and things that this, this God of this world will do. And what we've done is we've purchased, we drink, we've, we're drinking his Kool-Aid. We need to recognize, draw a little skull and crossbones on the Kool-Aid cup. This is the problem that we have in churches. Instead of preaching with power again and telling people they can be set free, get the Word of God into your life, get it deep down into your heart, into your spirit, and it'll change your life. You'll become radically saved. And then your, your, your pastor won't have to tell you that you said a prayer, so you're going to heaven. People will begin to see your life has changed. And they'll say, this is a true Christian here. This is what needs to be preached again. Not this just God of love. He loves everybody. Come on. Okay, go ahead, Tom. Verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Okay, check this out. <clears throat> There's a treasure in earthen vessels. That's us. So here's the, here's the treasure. And earthen vessels is the clay and water that we live in. And what do you do with the treasure in the earthen vessels? The treasure actually is getting the Word of God, reading it, understanding it, and now you duplicate it. It changes you, and now you duplicate it, and you represent what the Word of God says here. You represent, you represent Jesus Christ. You represent Christ Jesus. You represent the Apostle Paul. You represent the apostolic age that we're supposed to be operating in. You represent power and glory and divinity from on high because when God shows up in your life, every demonic force has to bow. Not exactly has to flee until you gain an understanding, a fuller understanding of how to walk for Christ. So because you say Jesus Christ is Lord doesn't mean the demons are all shuddering. If you just parrot it from the, from the stage, from some pastor that says, just say Jesus Christ is Lord, and you don't have to worry about any demon in your life, that's a falsehood, friends. You need to understand what lordship means. We all need that. We need, to, we need to, some good power teaching again of what Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus is, what he died for, what we're living for. What on earth are you here for? We have treasure in earthen vessels in the clay and water. And this treasure is to be laid up in heaven. If it's to be laid up in heaven, that means we're supposed to be pleasing unto the things that the Father wants us to do. We have to represent Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus in his fullness. And we, we, have, the, we have it written right here. Paul is saying, get away from all this other stuff that's going to cause you to fall and stumble. Get away from this type of teaching. And, and, and get yourself around preachers that will preach the truth. Go ahead. Uh, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. He's talking about the excellency of power. You have power that comes out of you by this type of, uh, uh, this type of preaching to where it, if the rubber meets the rope, this is the way it is. You've got to live for Jesus Christ. 
You got to look for, you, you want treasure here, you can have your treasure here. You want the treasure to remain in you to where you can give it unto the Lord. And then when you die and you stand before God, those, those treasures are stored up there for you. This is what we, we are missing in churches today, friends. The power of God is in the excellency of not only preaching the word, but receiving the word. And when you receive it the right way, you receive it through power. Paul is, this is a power gospel. This is a ministry of power. And Paul is saying if you receive it the right way, then it'll, it'll just pour from your, your, it'll come out of your pores, basically. It'll pour out of your pores. It'll seep from you. People will recognize you. They'll know that you're different. Something's different about you. You're different. You don't, you don't say the same things that you used to. You're convicted differently. I tell people a lot, you might be able to do this. You call yourself a Christian. You might be able to get away with those things, but I can't. Because the Spirit of the Lord has been ministering to me. Are you holier than thou, Pastor Glenn? Friends, I do my best to live for Jesus. And someday I'm going to stand before a holy God, and I'm not going to have to worry about you. I'm not going to worry about all the critics. Listen to what, listen to what Tony is saying here. Paul, not only he's preaching the excellency of power, he's talking about a ministry of power that followed him. But look what Paul had to go through. Was he the happiest, happiest camper here? When it came to all the people, did he have everyone loving him and saying, Wow, you're a pastor of America, man. You are just awesome. You're the pastor of Corinth. You're wor you are worthy to be praised, Paul. No. Paul is saying, this is what it comes with. I keep reading. Go ahead. Again, verse 8, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, yeah. but not forsaken. Persecuted. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life mm -hmm. of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So the life of Christ, he's talking about dying to the world. You're dead in Christ. You're dead to the world. So the world has nothing to offer you. This is true Christianity. This is discipleship 101. You want a ministry of power, you have to look at this and say, all right, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, but what about God's plan? This is man's plan. We've purchased something different. We've purchased man's plan for God, or man's plan for man. This is God's plan for man. To understand the fullness of the Godhead, to understand the fullness of the Trinity. And I know we're running out of time here. I'm gonna get we'll finish off this one verse and we'll continue with this next week. Go ahead. For we who who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So the life of Jesus Christ has to be coming out of us. Life. Not just God loves you, but life, power, and authority and the demons should be bowing to you. You want to say you're a New Testament church? You want to claim that you're going to a New Testament church, a true New Testament church? Are demons coming out of people? Do you see miracles, signs, and wonders? And is the pastor preaching truth, enough truth, that what we're, what we're listening to here, Paul is saying you're not going to be liked by everybody. You're not going to be the most loved person that's out there. And this is the type that we need again, the type and shadow of Jesus Christ. Let's finish off so we can close. 12, so then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. So it's all about the eternal end. It's all about the ending on when you're spending time with the Lord up in heaven. What are you going to do? What are you going to talk about? You can say, Lord, I, I, I was there and I, I, I was with a pastor that just talked about love, 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 and we never learned anything. Or I was down on earth and I, I got together with a group of people, a group of Christians that says, we truly love you, but we, we love you and we fear God and we want to make sure that you're living a life. We'd rather tell you the truth than for you to be hurt and for you to miss the mark and for you to lose all your treasures that you've gained down here when you stand before a holy God. We're out of time here, friends. I want to pray with you real quick. Father God, we just come before you. We thank you for this, this uh, teaching here today. We thank you, Lord. We're, we're looking for a ministry of power, but we want this ministry of power to be done your way, not our way. 
Father, we just submit ourselves to you, and we ask you, Lord, to search out all those things that are in our life, Lord. King David says, Lord, search me and find if there's a wicked way inside of me. We want to be clean, Lord. Help us to be that in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you next week.